Okay, guys, last time we start talking about the uh, marine ecosystem and we said marine ecosystem considered part of the aquatic ecosystem because the aquatic ecosystem or water ecosystem could be divided into the freshwater or marine uh, ecosystem. Once we talk about the marine ecosystem, we talk of mainly about oceans and seas okay, because oceans, they represent the most part to cover the Earth's surface. And then we said this marine ecosystem contains a variety of living organisms or has a high biodiversity because of the different environmental conditions that could be found in the different regions or different areas of that ecosystem. And regarding to this, we said this marine ecosystem actually will be shaped or the different zones will be determined regarding to some apiotic factors or non-living factors like the availability of the sunlight and the temperature and the pressure or the depth. So we see that as depth increases, of course, the availability of sunlight decreases and the temperature decreases, which affect the form of life that wouldn't then be found in that place. So regarding to this, we last time we classified the marine ecosystem into four regions, okay? The intradial zone, neurotic zone, and the oceanic zone, and pelvic zone. So here, four regions depend on the depth and the temperature of so just to remember, we said that the intradial zone, that the zone which is somehow in connection between the shore and the world, so that the shallow area in the beginning of the marine ecosystem. The neurotic zone, we said that the area in which the deep start to increase suddenly, and we find this, the depth that not that big, but somehow we have more depth, which means less sunlight and less or temperature start to decrease and so on. And finally, we find the oceanic zone that means the open area of the ocean, which include the most big living organisms in the ocean. And the Pacific zone that the area which near to the ocean floor in which there is a high pressure and extremely cold, no, no sunlight. And as we studied last time, we know that each zone of these okay, zones include some living organisms which have certain adaptation that enable them to survive in this situation. Today, we're going to go through a closer look. That means we're going to just specify certain regions or certain ecosystems within the marine ecosystem or within uh, the ocean to see how the forms of life are look like in that place and what the difference between them. So let's start at the beginning by the intradial areas. So intradial areas, as we said, that the area which found near to the shore, okay, that the connection, and we said the most common thing about that place that it's the animals which found that lately must have the adaptation to be exposed to the air, okay, because this is, they are not covered all the time because of tides and the ebbs. So as water, okay, move forward during tides, they already covered by water, but once the water come back during ebbs, so during ebbs, so they somehow uncovered and they exposed to the air. So in that case, this animal is supposed to have a okay, kind of mo modification that enable them to be able to expose to the air in some times of the day. Also, we are going to find that this animal somehow they must be able to attach to themselves uh, strongly to the floor to be able to uh, stand against this force of pushing and pulling of tide and up. So somehow not be drifted by the water. So, for example, we're going to find some organisms that they form something like root like, okay, we make something or structures like root or like roots that enable them to call, uh, to attach themselves to the floor of the, uh, of the ocean or the, the, uh, the floor uh, of the intradial zone. We call this structure the hold fats. Uh, so, the hold fasts they are root like structures which enable. Uh, some aquatic living organs that survive in the intradial zone to attach themselves to the rocks to prevent them from being drifted by the water. So what are the animals that could found in this uh, place? Actually, this okay, we could find there are the, here and that we have many organisms, okay, they could found in this like some worms, clams, crabs, and of course planktons, they are found in that place in large numbers, okay. So this area actually therefore could change so we could find the mud flats, sandy beaches, okay, rocky shores, depend on the type of the shore or depend on the type of the soil that we be in connection on the water. Okay. So it seems here that this area it receives enough amount of sunlight, its temperature is somehow is warm because it's near to 
okay, or it's a deep that's not that big, so it receives an available amount of sunlight which could warm the water. So here, that's the form of the life, or that's how the life will look like in that place. But once we start, or once we just go deeper a little, okay, or just move forward in the ocean, we're gonna pass to the neuritic uh, zone. So the neuritic zone, we said that the area which will not receive, will receive good amount of sunlight, but as we go deeper, the amount of sunlight decreases, so the temperature also decreases. So neuritic zone, that is highly specified, or they are actually characterized by the appearance or the presence of coral reefs. So what are coral reefs? We said that coral reefs actually they are just structures. They are made of animals that live in high group building uh, corals. They live in big groups or populations together. Once these corals die, okay, they leave their skeleton behind and the skeleton, that skeleton start to accumulate with some sediments of the rock that creating a kind of uh, sedimentary rock as we saw the last year, the biochemical sedimentary rocks, and they solidify and harden more and more. Then new corals could survive or they could live in the, uh, this corals or the old corals and that the reefs start to form. Once the coral reefs are formed, they can serve as a shelter for many living organisms. Okay, they could hide in or take it as a kind of protection and live inside. That's why we could find that place it contains amazing living organisms like most colorful fish, okay, and different kinds of sea stars, okay, and even some kinds of um, algae, colorful algae and something like this. That's why, we, as we said, divers prefer to dive in that place and just for entertainment to explore this diversity of the ocean and find this different okay, living organism in these different colors and so on. So here like this, we could find the animals that could live in that place, algae, okay, bright colored fish, sponge, sea stars, okay, sea urchins, and the, a lot of coral reefs. So here like this, that's the most important thing about the neuritic zone. Then we have another thing we could, okay, uh, estuaries. Okay, so the estuaries that we said that uh, estuary that is a region which the fresh water from the river is gonna met with the salt water of the ocean or the sea. Because as we know, in a river, it starts from the beginning, keep flowing or keep running until it starts to pour a tour in a, a bigger. Uh, water body like the sea or an ocean. That means any river must end to a sea or a, an ocean. So this connection of that area, like here, for example, in Egypt, too, as we know, the Nile River is keep running from the Scythian Plateau until it reaches the Mediterranean Sea, okay, at the end of the Egypt or the north of the Egypt. So here like this, okay, uh, the two branches of the Nile River, okay, so they start to put their water on the Mediterranean Sea. Maybe in another place, places, okay, could find that the river could pour its water in uh, an ocean. So here, this area, okay, that the connection between the fresh water and the uh, saline, saline water or the salty water of the ocean, we call this estuary. So what is the important thing about this place, or what is special to make this a special ecosystem or something like this? Actually, the the most important thing here that as the fresh water is going to be added or mix it with the salty water that will lead to different in the concentration of the salts in that place. That means the concentration of, of the salinity of the water will not be constant all the time because as fresh water is added, that will decrease the concentration of the salts. And also that will add nutrients from time to time to that place. So living organs that live in that region, okay, or in this kind of ecosystem, they must be able or have a kind of adaptation to survive in the changing of the concentration of the salts, okay? So their bodies must or their cells must be flexible to match with this difference in concentration of uh, the salts, because as we know, uh, changing concentration of the salts that may affect the cells of passing the substances in and out. You know this, okay, as we studied last year because of the osmosis and something like that. So somehow they adapt with that uh, or have they have different adaptations that enable them to survive in that place. As nutrients are added with the fresh water of the river, so we could find that this place contain a lot of nutrients from time and time, which allow a lot of living organisms to survive in that place, especially the plankton. And once the plankton are available in large number, they can provide the food uh, resource for many living organisms. So we could find that there are a lot of animals in that region or in that place in the ocean. Is it clear, guys, here? 
Guys, is it clear? Yes. Anything is not clear in that part, guys, or anyone cannot understand any part of what I explained? Me, I don't understand the query read. The query read. So one more time again, guys. If there is in, uh, some part is not clear, please, okay, raise your hand, pause me and ask. Okay. Again, query reads. We said that query reads actually they are found in this look. Look me carefully here. Do you see this part, guy, uh, Jenna? Yes. This area, that is the nertic zone, okay, in which the uh, depth of the ocean starts to increase, okay, and line flow. So that place, okay, there are a lot of living organisms called corals, okay, so like these ones, okay, these green ones. So these corals, they live in huge number. They have somehow hard skeleton, but once they die, the skeleton will not decompose, the skeleton will remain. And then this skeleton will mix with some chemicals, okay, and some sediments, breaks uh, or the small pieces of rocks, okay, that whatever carried by the water and so on. So that will make this skeleton be harder and lost and never decompose. So new corals will live on these skeletons, and once they die, they are going to add more skeletons and so on. So they're going to create something we call the coral reefs. This coral reefs are considered as a home of the other animals, like some kinds like clownfish, anemones, and uh, some European sea stars, and so on, small animals. They take this coral reef as a kind of protection, shelter to hide from their predators or their enemies or to live in. So that place will carry a kind of diversity of these living organisms, okay? That's why we said it uh, appeared to be colorful because most colored fish and most the colored algae, sea stars, they are found in that place. That's why it attracts the entertaining diving, okay, or divers to, okay, dive in that place. Is it clear like this? Yes. Are you Thank sure? You. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, guys, any other question? Introduced areas, coral reef, and estuaries. Anyone have any question regarding this? Guys. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's pass to the next part, okay, here, actually, this one is a special or something, okay, unique, something called the Sargasso, okay, see, what is Sargasso Sea? Actually, it's a very uh, unique uh, ecosystem that's found in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, uh, what does it mean? That means, actually, it's a specified region within the Atlantic Ocean. So, what is special about that place? Actually, this place, okay, is... Uh, Special because it's a structure or the chemical composition of the water in that area uh, that means the availability of some nutrients and the availability of uh, the uh, salinity and something like that, okay, which you found in that place, allow a lot of certain type of algae called sargassums. Okay, so these sargassums, okay, they grow in huge number and they make covering, making something like something with the algae plume, they are covering, okay, the surface of the water, which considered as a kind of uh, protection that uh, many living organisms could live behind to just hide from their predators. So this kind or this, that's just, a, this is a unique place because there is no other area in the ocean or even in the other oceans look like this area. So that's considered to be as specific or a unique um, ecosystem because we here have certain type of living organs that dominate that place which is the sargassum uh, algae so that's why we call it sargassum sea. Is it clear guys is it clear guys here? Guys is it clear? Guys is it clear or not? Guys can you hear me? Mr. Okay, so this part, can do you hear this part or just repeat again? That I repeated to I didn't hear it. Okay, so again, guys, we have well, so we have a specific ecosystem or a very special ecosystem that found in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Just a certain region within the Atlantic Ocean is not found in any other place except the Atlantic Ocean. We call it the Sargasso Sea. What is the Sargasso Sea, guys? Actually, it's a, a region, an area within the middle of the Atlantic Ocean that has certain environmental conditions that allow the growth of many or a huge number of a certain algae called Sargassum. That's why we call it Sargasso Sea regarding to the algae Sargassum. 
This sargassums all they grow in huge number and they make like a cover or blanket that cover the sea surface or that area. This helps some living organisms to hide under it, uh, use it as a kind of protection to hide from their predators. So it has a special uh, structure, a special form of life, and certain living areas live in that place, which make it a unique ecosystem never found in any other place except in the Atlantic Ocean. Is it clear here, guys? Yes. Okay. The last part here, or the last region, or the last special ecosystem, we're going to find the polar ice. So we find that the Arctic, uh, Arctic Ocean, okay, and the ocean around the uh, Antarctica, okay, that means near to the North Pole, okay, we are going to find that they have icy water. Most water is icy, but as we know, because water, once it freezes, uh, it expands, so that make the only the surface of water is frozen while the water under it is somehow uh, still liquid and the uh, living organism could survive in. This part somehow is still rich in nutrients, contain a good amount of nutrients, which allow different kinds of living organisms to survive. A lot of planktons they are found, so that will allow a lot of, uh, or they allow certain types of fish. To survive and some birds they they feed on this kind of fish they could survive also in that place and okay large mammals they could found also like the polar bear okay they could found in that places and penguins for example so here that also is a special place because the temperature here the, in that place is actually completely different than the temperature of the other places of the ocean like this guys we know the different ecosystems okay or the different marine ecosystems that we could find and what make them special, okay, what make them different from each other. And we could imagine how the biodiversity of living organs that could find in that, uh, that could be found in that places or these uh, ecosystems regarding to the difference in the abiotic factors. So any hard question in that part, guys? Is there any part is not clear? Guys, no. So, like this, we end our uh, lesson and we end the material of quarter three. So, please check your SMS to find the weekly plan. Uh, so, to know what are the sequence of the revision that we're gonna follow to be ready. Okay, so what are the lessons that we're gonna do, uh, or the lessons that you are gonna revise to be able to answer the sheets. And uh, also, uh, don't forget to answer the section review of uh, that lesson, page 539. And we are going to discuss it together, inshallah, next Sunday. So any hard question, guys, here? Anything is not clear? OK, study this part very well from your textbook, OK? And just remember, we have just a few weeks, OK, before our uh, exam, just about three weeks. So just start to revise, check your lessons. If you missed any part or something's not clear, just highlight it, OK, and start to ask about it. Thank you, guys, and goodbye.